Hey, what's going on guys? If you guys have been following along with some of the recent videos on my channel, you know that right now I'm working on a full trunk car audio build. We're gonna have two different amplifiers, we're gonna have a processor and we're gonna have subwoofers within the trunk. Before we can do any of that though, we need to do sound treatment. Now, why do we sound treat the trunk? First of all, we wanna prevent vibrations that steal acoustic energy from the subwoofers. And secondly, we wanna block out noise that occurs outside of the vehicle. We wanna stop road noise with the air and the tire against the ground and we also want to block out things like exhaust drone so by sound treating the trunk we're accomplishing those goals but how is it done in this video I'm going to show you the full process of sound treating a trunk and how I use this sound skins pro material to do so and also towards the end of the video I'm going to answer commonly asked questions that I see about using sound treatment materials let's jump on into it the most important thing when it comes to sound treating a vehicle is proper preparation let's start with cleaning up our environment here obviously I already have the interior pieces of the trunk removed but let's also get our panels here that are gonna hold the amplifiers and hold the battery out of the way The next step we need to do here is we need to do some cleaning in order to apply our new sound treatment materials. Before we get to that, I do want to explain really quick that yes, this build does already have some sound treatment materials. If you're new to sound treatment materials, it's important to understand that different materials accomplish different tasks. So these tiles that I used before, these were to really help stop the vibration in the panels. This material worked awesome and really helped to stop the vibrations, but now what I want to do is I also want to help stop a lot of the airborne noise and a lot of the exhaust drone. So rather than just partial coverage, I'm now going to be going with 100% coverage and the sound skins material also has that acoustic foam on top, which will help cut down a lot of that noise. For cleaning, you can see that we have a few years of different different crud and grossness down in here. We're just going to vacuum everything out. Next, I'm going to use a cleaning solution and some paper towel to clean all of the surfaces. The goal here being to remove any residual grease, any extra dirt, or anything that might otherwise hamper the adhesion of our sound treatment materials. After cleaning all the surfaces, I do one more sweep with the shop vac just to pick up any extra little pieces of paper towel or any residual dirt that got knocked out during the cleaning process. We can now move on to applying the sound treatment material. Now in this case, I'm gonna be using Sound Skins Pro material. As you can see, this is a combination of what we see as a typical sound treatment material right here. You can see it's got the foam layer and then it's got the butyl rubber layer along with the adhesive, but this also has an acoustic foam that is adhered on top of it. The combination of the different layers allows us to stop vibration, but it also helps to cut down on road noise. And since this is a foam material, if there's any wire harnesses or anything like that, that have to lay over the top of it. They can no longer vibrate against the metal within the vehicle and create noise. I have scraps of this material left over from some previous projects. So you're gonna see me using various different sizes here, but I'm going to start with sound treating the bottom of the wheel well. To do this process really isn't rocket science. You're going to remove the protective layer exposing the adhesive. We can stick it onto our surface and then we can use something like this, a wooden roller, to actually roll and adhere the material to the vehicle. The most important things to pay attention to is to make sure that you're not covering anything that you want access to. In other words, don't cover any bolts or anything that are needed to service different parts of the vehicle. If you're concerned with it, watch out for drain holes and always keep in mind that if you're putting the material behind different panels that will need to snap back into the vehicle, remember that you have to have room there so you can easily check for room on the back side of your panel to make sure that there's clearance. Let's keep moving in warp speed and get the rest of the spare tire well done. Here we go, the spare tire well is now completely sound treated. This is definitely one of the more difficult areas of the trunk to do. Obviously this area here is flat, this is flat, and this, although it does have some curvature to it, it's one more massive piece that we can kind of cover with a single sheet and then work into the curves. And we're going to do that area along with the flat part next. Now, before we move on to that and I talk about some of the frequently asked questions for sound treatment, I do wanna take a quick second to thank our new channel sponsor, 
Soundskins. In this episode, I'm using the Soundskins Pro, but they also have their new light material. We can talk about that in an upcoming episode, but what I wanna highlight here is the new Soundskins rings. Once you open up the bag, you'll find these inside. You've got two pairs here. You can see they have an adhesive material on the back. And what these do, these go behind the speaker in your door panel, and then these go around the speaker. You, of course, pick the ring that matches your speaker size, and what this does is it helps to guide the sound from the front of the speaker through the speaker opening in the door panel into the vehicle. That way the sound doesn't bounce around inside the door panel creating cancellations or any distortion. So there you have it guys, the new Soundskins rings. I'll put links down in the video description for you guys to check them out. Let's get back into the trunk and applying the rest of this material. The process is pretty much the same from here on out so I'm just gonna rip through it. So there we have it, the trunk is now completely sound treated. Now I wanna move on to some of the frequently asked questions that I get from you guys whenever I do a video like this. So by far the number one question that you guys are always asking is how much material do I need? This is really simple to do, it just requires a little bit of math. Take a tape measure and just measure approximate distances of each different area, kind of break it out into different sections. So the tub might be one section and then the flat areas in the trunk here are another section and then the sides are a third section. Once you've broken out into sections, you determine the approximate width and depth of each of these sections, or if you're doing the sides, it would be the depth and then the height, and you use those values to determine an approximate area. You would just do depth times the width or depth times the height. Once you have an approximate area for each of the different sections, you just add them together and that's the approximate size of material that you're going to need. When I did my approximations here, I had about 28 square feet and as it turns out, each of these rolls is about 11 square feet. So I knew that I would need at least three rolls to complete this project. And that's actually what it took. I ended up using three rolls. So the second question that comes up constantly is, hey, doesn't that material add a bunch of weight to the vehicle? Isn't that gonna make your car slower? And isn't that going to make your car use more fuel? Yes and yes. Guys, in any hobby or in a lot of different things in life, it's all about trade-offs. For myself, I enjoy great sound. So if I wanted this car to be a track car to go as fast as possible, I probably wouldn't be adding hundreds of pounds of subwoofers and amplifiers and sound treatment material into the vehicle. Now by adding this, does your car become less fuel efficient? Yes, it's adding additional weight. At the end of the day, you have to decide what's important to you. And to me, what's important is getting great sound, blocking out all the road noise, making sure that I'm not having vibration issues and that I'm not losing acoustic energy to vibration of the vehicle. If you're new here, I'd love to have you as a subscriber so that you don't miss videos when I release them in the future. If you guys would like to check out the full sound treatment process on a previous build that I did, you can check it out here on screen. A special thanks goes out to John, Brian, John, Bue, Wheels, Steve, Jerry, Emmanuel, James, and Colin, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. A big thanks to those guys for helping with the making of these videos and for being part of the team. You can check out more details to that down in the video description. As always, my friends, thank you for watching.